We're in a culture war. We have to fight the culture war because it's a war about culture. What's the war about culture about? How many sides are there? How does it work uh, enemy-wise? Who's the enemy here? Is it big government versus little government people? Is it progressives versus conservatives? Is it about gun control? Is it about the definition of marriage or gay rights or pornography? Is the culture war about Main Street versus Wall Street? Commun communism versus capitalism? Is it management versus labor? What's the war about? The main driver of the culture war is sex. It's a battle about sex. And what began as a dream of sexual liberation has led to a nightmare of social chaos. And it didn't start with the silly 60s with hippies and drugs and free love. It began in the early 1950s with the drive for a pill that would manipulate female fertility in such a way so as to separate sex from babies. A nominally Catholic doctor named John Rock from Harvard was a pioneer in the effort to create a chemical concoction that would change the world more profoundly than the invention of the atomic bomb. That bomb landed when the FDA finally approved it. It was called the Enovid in 1960, the first birth control pill. And then the floodgates opened up. For the first time in human history, every form of sexual perversion was made possible. Once sex was shorn of its connection to conception and the creation of new human persons, all bets were off. Even the Jewish atheist Sigmund Freud and the, and the Hindu Mahatma Gandhi understood that the birth control movement would lead to seriously bad personal and social consequences like abortion, adultery, fornication, using women as instrumental pleasures for males. No, the culture war is about sex, specifically about what sex is for. Thomas Aquinas said famously that you can't know what a thing is until you know what it's for. But we live in an age where things don't mean anything. We're not really supposed to talk about what things mean. We're supposed to talk about what things can do for me and not what things are in themselves. If we get the meaning of sex wrong, we get everything else wrong. We get our relationship with God wrong and we get our relationship to the state wrong. We say kind of glibly that, well, all life is sacred. If we believe that, then we would believe that the means of transmission of that sacred life was also in some sense sacred. But very few pro-life Christians believe this. And so sex is left out of the equation. The cultural oligarchs who invented the sexual revolution don't want you to think about sex. Thinking about sex is a radical, dangerous act. They want you to emote about it, to pine for it, to indulge in it. Sexual liberation itself has become a form of political control. As long as we're weakened by our vices, we're much more easy to manipulate. From abortion to no-fault divorce to the pornification of the culture to STDs, these are just part of the cost that the children of the sexual revolution are willing to pay so far. In 1968, Pope Paul VI wrote an encyclical, very short, it's only 33 paragraphs long, called Humanae Vitae, and it restated the, the traditional, historic Christian rejection of contraception. You can draw a straight line from the rejection of that teaching in 1968 to the redefinition of marriage in the Obergefell-Hodges decision in 2015. And now, with marriage redefined, next on the block of our cultural oligarchs is the trans and non-binary uh, person movement. See, there's always the next thing that the oligarchs want. Because if sex and babies are disconnected in theory, look out what happens in practice. I wrote a book about all this called Sexo Naturel, what it is and why it's good for your marriage. In it, you will find answers to questions like, is there a population explosion? What's the difference between natural family planning and contraception? Where is all this in the Bible? How to answer objections to this uh, critical Christian teaching. It's all there in um, Sexo Naturel. I hope you enjoy it.